hello everybody and welcome to the newest indoor adventure in Monster Noir City of Mist Part 4. Today is August 19th, 2021 and you are loved. That is a very important thing that we like to remind each and every single one of our viewers and listeners at the beginning of each and every single one of these games. If this is your first time joining us, you can go to youtube.com slash indoor adventures to check up on all the VODs of each of the games that we have played up until this point, including full playthroughs of a plethora of tabletop RPG podcasts, and we are also available anywhere audio casts are made available for free. And speaking of things that are being made available for free, if you go to indooradventure or no patreon.com slash indoor adventures, uh, you can check up on our after show called Nights in the Courtyard, where we answer questions not only from each other, but also from the community. So if you have any questions for myself or any of these other fine folk, feel free to join us again at that Patreon, and we will do our best to respond in kind. You can, of course, ask all those questions on our Discord. The link can be found in the Twitch chat to the side or in the description of this video down below and yes like satan said in our chat sometimes she does have me read some really terrible smut uh so you know if you want to pay for that kind of thing or don't you can again join us on the patreon uh but if you already support us on patreon you already support us on youtube and twitch and all of those other places and you're trying to think to yourself where can i go to help support this wonderful show even more Guess what, buddy? I got your back. Quite literally, in fact, because if you go to indooradventure.redbubble.com, we got t-shirts, we got posters, we got mugs, we got crop tops, throw pillows, shower curtains, clocks, aprons. We got a new line of merch, the You Are Loved merch. We got it for all sorts of pride flags. I'm wearing my Ace Pride uh, shirt today. So, hey, for all you Ace friends out there, you are loved. That's an important thing to remember. Um... And, of course, uh, we also sell tea masks. That's right, we have face masks with the symbol of Tiamat upon them, designed by our very own Cyberwolf1201, where all of the proceeds end up going to help support Doctors Without Borders. So, if you would like to help support a good cause, or possibly help support the show, you can again go to indooradventure.redbubble.com. That is indooradventure.redbubble.com. But, that is it for my opening spiel. So, hey, Satan, who are you playing today? Hi everyone, my name is Satan, and today I will be playing Lilith, the Vampire Queen Mobster. I don't know, I love her. She uses she, her pronouns. I use she, they pronouns. That's me. Hey everybody, I'm Wings, also known as Danae Keener. I'm going to be playing as Dot Flannery, uh, who is now Anne, a werewolf, uh, whereas she was previously an unaware wolf, but now she is very aware. Hi, I'm Jen. I go by she, her. And I'll be playing Beltane Hawthorne, the mobster fae, and he goes by he, him. And I am the indoor adventurer, and tonight I shall be playing as Ezekiel Sullivan, the gunstar hero. Both of you see him. Greybeard of Greybeard's Tavern, and tonight I'll be everyone else in the universe, in the city of Mist. The last time, oh, and I use he, him, there. Last time on Monster Noir, we ended with... A man being brought back to life. He was dying. But then we realized the camera moved under the table and saw that there was a square, an icy blue glow with runes inside the square. And the doctor rushed in and said, live, damn you, live. <gasps> and he seemed to come back to life. And everyone in the room clapped for the doctor. And the doctor looked all, like, happy. But then we look down in our through-the-veil vision, and we see that the man has been brought back as a zombie. So one more zombie in Rovecloft. Port Rovecloft. Um, and ah, uh, some other important things that happened last time. We did get a montage of uh, Lilith and Beltane dancing uh in the park and uh they did the whole uh, mystical rise up off the ground through magic fae uh fae and vampire you know if you want to get your fae vampire uh ships going on here this is the show for you uh other things that happened is once again zeke shot dot the werewolf um because, well, that seems to be, you know, a theme with them. Uh, 
and so it's uh, a fun they, game we play <laughs> they were chasing the they were hey, you flirty too um uh <laughs> they were uh chasing the doctor through the old mental hospital and uh you know things happened badly uh, zeke tried to hit the doctor missed hit dot dot not quite full of her faculties when she is in werewolf form uh, left at zeke um but uh zeke got uh managed to be very persuasive and turn turn our attack werewolf upon the doctor again um other than that what else do you need to know this show is kind of like uh supernatural hellboy uh dark shadows any of those kind of um you know the monsters exist but there's this veil this in this game system the mist uh basically keeps people normal people from seeing the the other side and the superpowers and the monster attributes of uh certain individuals uh, those are our characters let us begin we've seen the 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 uh doctor brings said zombie back from from the dead uh in our previews from there we will jump to uh dot and zeke you were still in the um still in the men the closed down old mental ward part of the abandoned hospital what do you do the doctor had escaped you um well, I shot my friend, uh, or at least I, friend is light on that one. Like, we've done some stuff together. You're an associate, uh, if anything. Um, and so I feel like if you're still bleeding, Zeke will try and help staunch the bleeding. I, f I feel like there's a couple of different ways we could take this. Mm -hmm. Um either the silver would negate her regeneration abilities or potentially a bigger problem uh it doesn't re negate her regeneration capabilities and now she's got a silver bullet stuck inside her which means that she can't turn into a werewolf mm. i want i want outside opinions which which is the worst situation <laughs> and therefore the one that we should pick uh i would say it regens around the silver bullet, but maybe it's like causing an infection inside, like you're getting silver poisoning. Mm. Yeah. So, so, like, okay, so like. Then we gotta it, go to a doctor who knows how to operate on you. Right. Okay. It prevents. Just the vet. I mean, like, she's still got silver inside her, so it's gonna prevent her from transforming. <laughs> but it's also bad that it's inside her because it's it's not healing. How about correctly. both? No yes. regeneration and you can't turn into a werewolf. Yes. <laughs> there you go. Ouch. Turned you into a regular person who got shot. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, so then you will need to write a tag. Silver poisoning. Okay. So, yeah, let's uh, let's put that down. And uh, hence, you have um, yeah, you 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 can't transform. So, ooh, that's gotta that's gotta be a tag also. So, all right, let's just roll it into the silver poisoning, and we'll just we'll give it a two. We'll give okay. it a, a power of two, so it's it's a neg two. All right. To such things as applicable. Um, Okay, so Dot is bleeding and is not healing. What do you do? Uh, I feel like Zeke is would like take off his bandana uh, mm -hmm. that he has and try and like, like he's familiar with people who are suffering from gunshot wounds. <laughs> Uh, Mostly because he costs them. Well, that's <laughs> debatable. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
as to whether look no blame on me i am a perfect shot you just mm. got in the way clearly uh so i feel like he would try and use bandana um to try and like create tension on on the on the shot wound uh did we do we know uh like did we establish where you had gotten shot um cuz if it's like the arm kind I of do thing, not like, remember if the where bullet is said. lodged I, inside of you i highly doubt it's like one of your extremities i feel like yeah, that's going to be like the barrel yeah i don't think <laughs> i don't think we we specified where it was but i like imagined it was a shoulder shot but i always imagine it's just it's a shoulder shot it's just it's, a glancing it's wound it's somewhere torso wise yeah i feel <laughs> like um I feel like Zeke would probably like try and like like bandana like put it closed but like clearly can't wrap all the way around it. Um He wears a button up, so he'd probably like just to like create like turn it like like coat off, okay, like starts unbuttoning shirt. Like he wears an undershirt because it's cold outside, but like we need something that we can wrap this with, and he's not gonna tear his his good shirt. A little blood never hurt nobody, but God forbid he tears it. Speaking as a vampire, um, <laughs> a little blood did hurt. <laughs> I think that uh, that dots kind of fading in and out of conscious uh, out of consciousness, um, and th there's there's not a lot of interaction between the two of them. Nope. She, she she's in she's in shock. Like this, it's it, it's a not good situation for her. All right. This is also this will lead into the amazing scenario of trying to exit a hospital with a bleeding person, <laughs> being right. like, no, like the hospital is not the right place for this. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. So, uh, yeah, you're you're uh, currently underground Fuck. in the mental hospital part of the hospital i are, are you gonna try to find an exit from underground or are you gonna go up a floor um, or okay so i would like to use my uh part of my logos mm -hmm. uh for uh to try and address does this look like something like has zeke it, would zeke be familiar enough to know that if he removes the bullet that this will be fine he's a do-it-yourself kind of guru uh and there's enough tools and everything around here that he could pot like he could try and like get he could try and do it himself but uh it probably wouldn't work out the best or does you he feel like he should like really hmm i mean I I can't tell Zeke what to do. All, right. <laughs> I, I, all I can do is... Alright, I rolled higher than half. He's gonna try and find help. Alright, okay. All I right. did an RJ thing and let the dice mm -hmm. decide for oh, me. Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's your mood school there. Uh, okay, so, uh, um, yeah. But, in the meantime, uh, he is going to take out his revolver uh the non-silvered one um and he is going to um like just fire into the wall mm -hmm. and while the barrel is still hot he's gonna cauterize the wound okay ow all right hey man uh, either complain about complain about your cauterized wound or all of the blood that you're fucking losing like it needs to stay in there right now <laughs> The the old Max Bullet move. Okay. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, ba boom. Uh, forty four goes off. <laughs> um, and definitely hey. would be like, all right, like bite onto this, but you're all like <laughs> fading in and out of consciousness, just like ah, fuck it. Like, <laughs> yeah, as soon as the barrel like hits her, like I, I want to say that she wolfs out just barely, and then mm. like snaps back because of the silver inside her. Mm hmm. It like yeah. you can see it in the eyes and like the teeth kind of thing, like hackles being raised, but then just goes right back. 
All right. So, you know, when you perform a daring, risky, or outright stupid feat, roll plus flower, power. <laughs> Why did you enunciate that last one? Okay, so I feel like this would be survival of the fittest, mm-hmm. uh, as well as DIY guru. And because I'm using one of my pistols for this, could I roll uh, for my yes, pair of Yes, you can. Yeah. Do you have any, do you have any weaknesses? Uh, my weakness apply? was star touched. Uh, okay. And none of your other weaknesses would apply to this uh, one? Weaknesses, overlooked details, running out of ammo, I'm hollow inside and bitter. Oh. <laughs> uh, wow. Let's... Uh, Star Touch doesn't have anything to do with it. Um, uh, what about help and hurt as far as crew goes? Because I know I got two hurt on, on Zeke. Yeah. Uh, oof. yeah. I think I think you're looking at a plus one there, Zeke. All right, that's a nine. All right, take risk. Nine. Things get messy. The MC <laughs> will offer you a hard bargain or an ugly choice. Um, hmm, hard bargain or ugly choice. think that it it works but so here here's the 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 bargain or choice uh it works but yes there it stops the bleeding but the silver poisoning is going to go up one or uh it doesn't work and and she's going to take a different tag for minus one. My weakness is overlooked details. Mm-hmm. So he's just focusing on stopping the bleeding. All right. Okay. So up your, uh, uh, up your silver poisoning to a minus two. Okay. And then, uh, yeah. Uh, a- after we cut to another scene we'll come back and some time has passed where she's in like one of the you know on the horrible steel stainless steel roller tables of the old mental hospital laying there and we'll we'll come back to that what happened after the dance i don't know what happened after the dance belt team <laughs> i think um he took Lilith out on the night air and they explored the city under the stars and moon and just had a good old time. Well, I sure hope the children are having a good time. <laughs> <laughs> Belfay doesn't care about that. They didn't make a deal with him. <laughs> um, now, our... Are the two of you, when you say that, are you are you like flying around using magic or I stuff? Think they're just or... walking. They're just okay. walking. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I want to make sure because we, you know, we could have tried to <laughs> do a Peter Pan, Wendy, you know, soar the skies or something. How so and Sophie? Oh, they're walking, but it's still yeah. in the air. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Perfect. Um, <laughs> ah, there's a derail. Uh, Okay, um, so you're having a, a nice evening. There are no cell phones because it's in the 1940s. Um, what would happen with you all? Uh, I guess. <laughs> I want to make a roll here. I gotta figure out which one. I always have to. Should look at these better. Ah, yes. Um. Hmm. Lilith, why don't you give me some kind of sensory roll? Sensory roll. Yes, anything that would give you a, a so two d six and then plus 
you know, anything that is is due to your heightened sense senses. Uh, I have mind reading. I could read minds that are around me, I suppose. Mm. Uh, so I'll do 2d6 plus that if you let me. Yep. And then uh, Beltane, uh, you're going to give her a plus one on this for just being magical in yeah. nature. <laughs> can I say that absorb life force also helps me because I can sense people's life force? Sure. Okay. Plus three. Okay, not bad. That's 13. I rolled two fives. That was easy math. I'm happy. <laughs> um, so it is, it's interesting because you normally, you know, you're like, is that a squirrel's heart beating? Hmm. Uh, you know, cat. Okay. You know, you know, you're feeling your, 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 your mm -hmm. uh, surroundings, your shadows, your vampiric senses are in okay. touch with the world in, <laughs> in, in a different way. Um, you actually feel negative life force, the like, like the absence of the absence of like. As if there's a vampire out there watching the two of you. I don't like this. Uh, <laughs> a little bit <laughs> soft set in her track and just looks around. Uh, is there a sort of perception check? Oh, let me go to quick moves. <laughs> uh, uh, invest, in, investigate. Investigate, yeah. Yep. Uh, da, 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 da. And that's two uh 2d6 plus any any power you think you can fork on into the into uh, the role and are you telling uh beltane i think she'll oh god i dropped my dice okay no. well that's gone forever oh uh, mm. <laughs> i'll pick it up later unless my cat plays with it i was gonna say um, sadie's got yeah. a new toy yeah um, um Okay, so I know this is something I've used in D and D before because mm -hmm. in D and D you can read people's minds and kind of like figure out where they are, kind mm -hmm. of. Yeah. So can I use that one to since I know life force is not going to cut it because they're undead? Can right. I just sense like minds? Um, like even if it's just like I know there's someone thinking thoughts in this direction, not necessarily yeah. specifically what they're thinking. Yeah, I'll uh. Yeah, go for it. Okay. Nine. I was going to say, we don't have a dice cam. You got to tell us. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I'm bad at math. <laughs> okay. Um, so you're sensing that, uh, that lack of life. Um, and then you try to reach out to, to touch the mind that's there. And... And it's big. It's there. The, the negative life force is small, but the mind in it is, is, is huge. Okay. Uh, kind of like, kind of, kind of like uh, back when you were in France and the, the, the nun had that 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 power that that sort of like ebbing magic mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, this feels like the opposite of that this okay. feels like a like like an all draining like like a never ceasing hunger um for life like the hungriest you have ever been for blood it is like a uh, you know. It, I can it, sense that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so she stops in her tracks, and I guess Belty would see her like her brows furrow, and she kind of like tilts her head. There's something out here. All right, and then uh, you also. So one of these, you either your investigation exposes you to danger. 
the clues you get are fuzzy, incomplete, or partially true, partially false, or whoever, whatever you are asking the questions can ask you a question as well. You answer in the say on the same terms. Expose me to danger. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> right. She's like trying to explain like this absence of life and this. She's. I feel like she's about to say, "Do you remember that?" No- Forget it. Um, back in France, no, right, forgot. You don't remember certain things. There is something hungry. You have dark. to explain the hunger and darkness. There are many creatures that fit that ex- description. Absence of life and a hunger. Well, for that's it. my sister in the middle of winter. No. This is not Bay. This is undead. Oh. Like me. Yes. Do I get like a sense of direction from this thing? Uh yeah, there's so you know the the concourse moves around and there's like a bank of woods and deep mm-hmm. shadow amongst mm-hmm. this little partition of woods. Mm-hmm. Um it's coming from there. She just looks over there and just points with one elegant finger. <laughs> Would you like a lovely moonlight forest walk with me? He holds out his hand and says, I sure hope the kids are all right. <laughs> she just shrugs. <laughs> and starts walking over there, uh, over to the woods with him. All right. Um, as you uh, get close, you, um, I guess the, uh, how to put this, there's a, a swirl of like bats and rats and, and insects that 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 burst out of the forest as you approach as you get close it uh it kind of like um yeah they just kind of explode out in in all directions and you feel that whatever it was is gone now you have you have known vampire in the past who can do this I have, yes. Yes. So it's it's not unheard of, but if this is the vampire, it would have to be a powerful one. Hmm. Powerful vampire in my territory without alerting me. Yeah. Not thickens. Mm-hmm. Isn't that against the old laws? <laughs> yes. Holding yes. up a set of petal <laughs> and just looking at it. Yep. And it's um yeah, actually, why don't you give me an investigate, um Beltane? Okay, okay, okay. Uh, magic does indeed apply. Okay, um tap into the source. Let's do that. And ink can hit. Yeah, that dice is gone. <laughs> cool. Sadie's got a new toy. That's yep. Awesome. I got a seven. All right. Okay. Um, yeah, so you're holding the centipede and it, 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 it crumbles to like aged dust. Like, mm-hmm. like, like, ugh. Like it had been sitting in a windowsill dead for weeks and you, you know, you went to pick it up and it just kind of, kind of crusted to pieces like it's inside head, insides had been desiccated. Like it was aged. With the dust off. Well, I guess I'm not speaking with them. And Lilith, that you've never seen. <laughs> that when they turn into bats and rats and stuff, mm-hmm. that's they they they're live. They're yeah. alive. So uh, 
Do I see where this like flock of creatures is going or is it just like spreading out? It's it's like a shotgun going everywhere. Um, and that presence is just gone. Yeah, it's just gone. Lil was not happy. <sighs> uh, Beltane, uh, with the seven to nine, you also get uh, a choice. Uh, your investigation uh, exposes you to danger. Clues you get are fuzzy and complete or partially true, partially false. Or whoever, whatever, asking the question, you can ask one as well. Or can ask you one as well. Hmm. Would the question being asked at me reply here? Uh, yes. Okay. Or you. Okay. I'll tell you what, you can also... Uh, you could take a clue to hold for later as a plus one. Okay, I'll, t- I'll take the clue. Okay, uh, just note that you have a clue that will give you plus one to uh, a question later on. If you want to put a note with it, just put undead centipede. So I'll kind of <laughs> remember. Okay. My boss is going to look at my hand tomorrow and be like, what the fuck? <laughs> Undead centipede. <laughs> it's my new tattoo. It's my band. Um, Undead centipede. <laughs> it's pretty hard, hardcore band. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. Uh, with that, I, ass- I okay, I, I cannot assume. Are you going back to the castle? Uh, she has calls to make. She doesn't okay. like that there is an unidentified uh, uh, elder vampire in her territory, specifically since she is now, she is the vampire council. Mm, that's right. <laughs> but I, did you, did you declare yourself queen? Uh, in, in, What's your... in different words, yeah. Okay. She, she, uh, I put I put that on the player character vampire queen. So yeah, sure, why not a vampire? Okay, queen. okay, okay. All right, okay. Um, the council woman. Uh, uh, the council. The council. We'll me. see you now. It's just it's just, <laughs> just, there, just, her, just, just one <laughs> one chair and empty table. Um, okay, good. So all right, you're gonna head back for calls. <gasps> Let's get back to the hospital. Zeke. What do you do? Well, has the bleeding stopped? I, uh, I, I believe it did because, yes. you know. You uh, cauterized yeah, it. Yeah, I cauterized it. Um, yeah. Uh, not. He's going to try and get, uh, like, he's going to, like, like not like fireman carry dot over his shoulder kind of thing. But, like, it's definitely going to be, like, a big cradle. Um, like, cradle carry to just, like, all right, we need to find you a place that can fix you that's not this hospital because if regular hospital people pull out the bullet i don't want you turning into a fucking werewolf and eating everybody in here (laughs) uh it's a good point (laughs) like because the only thing he thinks like the only thing that's keeping dot not werewolf is bullet inside if bullet comes out there's no telling what's gonna happen this lilith lady seems like she knows what for so like gonna try and sneak around although he understands that the the hospital might be on a little bit of a high alert considering the gunshots that have been coming from the abandoned ward uh it's just a thing that happens around these parts i guess Mm -hmm. um Mm -hmm. so yeah he's gonna try and like stealth uh he's gonna sneak around sneak around sneak around with with a a bleeding person um Thankfully, he is nimble as a fox and has a little bit of super speed. Um, <laughs> but that's mostly in like the quick draw aspect, not like his leggies being super fast. Mm-hmm. Uh, so this is like he's going to try and and get the two of them out of here. All right. And you have the disadvantage of carrying the recently a werewolf uh, <laughs> on you. So th- I'm going to impose a minus two for for that all right um yeah and i think the entire time zeke's just like 
uh he's like trying to talk to dot about just like all right it's i know i know it's painful right now but we're gonna get through this we're gonna get that bullet out of you i just need you to stay a little bit quiet uh while we try and get out of here so as soon as we're out of the hospital scream all you want but i swear to god if you ruin it if you ruin this right now uh that's uh well i rolled a seven you said i got a minus two uh Ooh. so that's a total of five Okay. All right. Um, I'm going to look at these choices because I, I, you know, taking the, 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 uh, DM move is awesome, but, uh, but I like to see what some of these are. Okay. Yeah. So complicated. The MC chooses one, but you failed. So it's more than that. It's, it goes back to one of my moves. Okay. Um, yeah, you're, uh, <laughs> you're getting her out, and then, like I said, they uh, all of a sudden, a staff member's like, oh my god, she's been shot! <laughs> and they, like, nurses and doctors come, and stop! Get a car, get, get, get a gurney, quick! And they, like, <laughs> they try I'm to good. pull... I'm trying pull. to fight back on this. <laughs> okay, you're trying to pull Dot away from you, and... Just like, just yelling like, "This is martial business." <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, this is gonna All put right. you on a list. <laughs> oh yeah, if I wasn't okay. already on one. <laughs> All right, you need you need a hardcore convince here, yeah, buddy. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah, I I'm yelling like, "This is martial business." They're a wanted criminal. Um. Like they're dangerous. Le like leave this to us. Us, of course, being me. Mm. Um, but I'm gonna try and like, I wanna, I wanna be fearsome about this. Like it's one of those like, oh my god, we need to stop. And just you get the fuck back. Like, <laughs> like just like, like not even like a cut the shit kind of thing. Just like like venom. Just straight. I like do not touch this person. Or this okay. pistol will be used on you, orderly. Like, I don't give a shit right now. Uh, right. Okay. Uh, so, uh, to that, we are going to give the uh, a neg two for the, basically their Hippocratic Oath and for dots, dots covered in blood. <laughs> is, is there any possible way for me to help him? Uh, do, do you have something, some, some skill, some, something? Um, that... I have a tag called terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, if you're like so making he's... weird, like animal growlers. All right, I will, I will give you, I will give you the terrifying. So, all right, go ahead. So that's a plus one. So that's so... a plus one. Okay. So, uh, fearsome. Would mm -hmm. that be counting towards this, or is that going to like help negate the other ones? No, that, oh, okay. that sounds that sounds okay, good. Cool, because if that's the case, that's a ten. If All fearsome right. and like terrifying are like, you get the fuck back, <laughs> and Dot's like, I'll kill him. <laughs> <laughs> well, like somebody, somebody like tries to grab her, and she literally just like roars at them. Yeah, just yeah. snarls, <laughs> just like. <laughs> 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 lunatic they did come from the mental part uh anyway uh so yeah so they they allow you to get out the door and um uh, what do you do uh um well i think uh zeke is going to uh he's just got a carrier he's got a carrier at least like <laughs> relatively towards a town or something or actually i have a very good idea uh mm -hmm. are there other people with cars uh that are oh, near yeah this is, this is a hospital a yeah i'm gonna uh. steal a car uh <laughs> right. i'm gonna steal a car or if i see somebody driving it's like mm -hmm. pistol out like give me your fucking ride like oh, he's right. like i am i am stealing this i need to get this body out of here and quick I right, don't know how uh, to drive, but I'm sure it's like riding a we're, horse. We're gonna we're gonna go for another convince roll, and we'll we'll stick with the same stats okay. on that. 
Uh, if I'm stealing someone's car at gunpoint, can my revolvers mm -hmm. count towards this? Sure. Okay. Sure. So that's an additional plus yeah, one. Yeah, plus three. <laughs> <laughs> You're having way too much fun with that. <laughs> that's an 11. All right. Okay. Uh... <laughs> I imagine it's like an old, like an older woman who just dropped off groceries somewhere and just get out of the fucking car. Like just like pistol out. Like you need to get out. Go, go, go. Like he's not telling her what it's right. for, but like need this um, ride. So on a hit, choose a relif relative relevant status with a uh, tier power. Your target can choose either to take the status or <laughs> 10 plus to change their agenda, include yours at least the time being. Uh, okay, so. Because I have an idea as to how to turn okay. this into a negative. Yeah, uh, no, it's good. They, okay. You succeeded. This person now basically has a status of what did you what was the power on that it was uh, like plus three yeah it was plus three they have like a uh you know high carjacked yeah plus a neg three you know kind yeah. of situation going on uh, so yeah they jump out of their car and they're like i don't want any trouble i don't want any trouble cowboy it's all yours um he just like he just nods uh and then like puts dot in mm -hmm. gets in like puts cow like sets hat down like next to them and just fucking like all right no power steering let's fucking go uh and he's going to go he's going to go back into town uh he's going to go right. into town cuz he he thinks like he doesn't he knows how to get to Lilith's place from town he doesn't know any of the backwards. He doesn't know anything. The only reason he knows how to get to this fucking hospital is because of Dot. Like, right. he wasn't paying attention. He didn't think this would be useful. Like, if anything, like, he yeah. knows how to get back to the zombie's house. And they're super not helpful right now. <laughs> so, does Zeke know how to drive? Uh, probably not. No? No, I don't think All that right. he knows. Or if he does, he does not know how to drive well. All right. Let's look at... Is there a move for do something you don't know how to do? Uh, take, yeah, the, right. take the risk. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you form a daring, risky, or outright stupid feat. Man, oh, I am God. just full of these ones today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I am a do-it-yourself guru and very self-reliant. Uh, I... So I feel okay. like uh, I... I feel like he could figure out a car, maybe. All right, all right. And you're you're trying to fly casual, so yeah, you you've got a plus two. All right. That's a nine. All right, a nine is fine. Uh, the thing is, is you don't really, you know, take notice of those details like stop signs or whatever. So you go through. I think you, those are suggestions. <laughs> they definitely. There's this hexagon or something. They make uh, great targets. Oh yeah, I shoot them out. <laughs> shoot them on my horse all the time. <laughs> exactly. Smiley faces in the O. Um, true story. Ask me in Knights in the Courtyard. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, you rip through this stop sign and woo! The sirens come on. What do you do? I just keep going. <laughs> All right. Pull over! Pull over! Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I feel... I feel like he's just gonna, like... One of those, like, mm -mm, Nope, not doing that. Like, or, or if he it's does... It's also a suggestion. <laughs> uh, or if he does, uh, he'll start, like... He's gonna, like, take his coat off and throw it over Dot... And then, like, put his hat over Dot's head, and then he'll pull over to make it look like she's just, like, like sleeping in the back. Uh, okay. Uh, you, you tell me. What do you do? Yeah, uh, I feel, I'll, I'll make it look like Dot's sleeping-ish, and then uh, I'll pull over uh, a little bit. And, like, I'll, I'll, I'll stop. 
Um, and then uh, just sorry, this is my first time in one of these. It was a trip. Okay, he comes up and he's like, uh, you can see he's just like, you know, his cheeks are red and he's like huffing up to the the window. He's like. What seems to be going on here? Well, I've never driven one of these vehicles before. I will say that outright, my friend. Well, d they found a container of some old moonshine that they got into. kind of caused them to lose a little bit of that vision. Uh, so I figured I'd be... Well, these things don't look too hard to operate. Uh, but dummy me, as soon as that weird octagon... Uh, showed up that said uh, that said pots on it. I didn't know what to do, and uh, I can't read too good I'm from the country, don't you know? Just visiting in town, really. All right, I hmm, convince. Oh, uh, let's see. I really want to use face danger on this, but it doesn't fit. Um. So, yeah, we're back to convince. What do you got? I mean, what do you got for it? Oh, nothing, right? That you're going to use on this cop. Not anything I'm going to use on the cop. The cowboy hat, because I put it over Dot to make it look like she was sleeping. <laughs> uh, that's one of my powers is cowboy hat. All right. Uh, so... Okay. All right. We'll give you the cowboy hat. Okay. There it is. Because <laughs> it's one of your powers. Seven. A seven. All right. Uh, on a seven and nine, to give in a little, but protect their own agenda. Ooh. Well, I understand that, you know, cars and people don't drive very often and whatnot. And it's kind of noble of you to try to get your friend home. But why don't I take you guys in and you could sleep it off I, I don't think that's real they get real angry when you wake them up well then then we'll have a situation how about, if they get real angry how about this how about you and I get a nice cup of coffee at that place across the road we let them sleep it off we talk about this And then <laughs> he's like hanging like, is there more? And um, then uh, after the cup of coffee's done, maybe you can teach. Maybe you can tell me a thing or two about how these dang things operate. Uh, I'm on patrol, but all right. Tell you what you pull in over there at that diner. You get the coffee. You let them sleep it off. I'll Man. even throw in some food for you. How about that? No, I I got to keep going. You? Well, no, I'll get it to go there. for you. I I'm fine. You over there? I don't want to see you out on the road for a while. I'll come back in a bit. Oh, trust me, I don't plan on being out on the road for uh, quite a bit. Thank you. All right. Now, what was your name? Officer Peaton. All right, Officer Peaton. If anybody asks, you were the kindest, most grateful officer in this entire city, and I recommend you run for mayor. And as as they're like trying to get a better look at Dot in the back, you know, it's your your constant like you get trying to get their attention yeah, yeah. again that that saves you on that one. Um, he gets in, and then he, you know, the big. 40s Studebaker police car mm -hmm. turns around and then rolls up, rolls away. It's waiting. It like turns around, but it's sitting there waiting for you to pull into the diner kind yeah, of thing. I'll, go, I'll pull into the diner. I will go inside and see if there is anybody uh, who looks a little different uh, mm -hmm. inside there that possibly might know of a good place to, uh, get a certain individual in the back of this car looked at. <laughs> All right. Um, I, I, 
I'm full of the roles tonight. I'm, I'm loving it. Uh, investigate. You are going to try to find someone who, you know, is beyond the veil. And I'm going to let the dice decide. Okay. Because um, I, I did not plan for a police chase in a diner. Uh... Boy, <laughs> you and I both. Um, all right. So I would say this would count uh, my bullshit detector. Might, okay. might take off if somebody's like, I am not a part of, I'm not beyond the veil. What are you talking mm. about? Be like, bullshit. Right. I'd sniff it. Um, I'll give you that. So a nine. Okay. The total. Uh, Seven to nine, uh, they can also choose one. Oh, oh okay. All right, so uh, we'll give you a relative, uh, relative uh, oh, answer, but you need to choose one. Your investigation exposes you to danger, fuzzy or incomplete, part true, part false, or whoever or whatever you're asking the question can ask you one question as well. That one. All right. Uh, All right. So, so I'll uh Hey friend, uh I just came in from an awful rough night. My uh um my companion in the car is having a little bit of a silver allergy. Uh just looking for more of a uh specialist, not so much on the doctors and uh one of the moonshiners if you know what I'm saying. And and so we see you're looking at this 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 just massive uh, like chef the short order cook guy, and he's he's got like you know mermaid tattoos and and you know an anchor uh, here it says mom and, on it <laughs> uh huh and you know the little the little white hat uh, the whole thing and he's standing there and you ask him the question and you know it goes to you for the question and it turns back to him and he's like some you know uh young saw goth with like like mind flare tentacles that he's all like green and you know just like slime rolling off him and he's like uh, uh yeah the silver allergy that can be a thing so lichen you're you're uh friends of lichen uh, i like to believe so and you you see some slime drip off into into a coffee cup that he's, he's someone's sitting there and the person with the coffee cup doesn't seem to see the slime and i think zeke sort of just like nods i don't think she knows it yet but oh well, she'll know when she wakes up yeah yeah, and and they're clawing like that, and the, this little crab falls out, and the, you know from like behind their their kelp uh, hair, and it lands on the table, and it, and then what we see from the other side of the veil is it looks like a spider, <laughs> and then we flip back around, and it's a crab. Um, uh, he's like, well, um, there's. Her. Well, I, I'd like to take care of you, but uh, uh, I don't really, I don't really know no doctors. You might want to. Mm, you know, that is fine. Somebody with tools. A vet. That's I know. A vet. A, 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 uh, yeah. So there's there's an army hospital like up the road. Uh, you know, the VA uh, kind of thing. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, you can go up there. Um, yeah. And they're good with silver allergies. They, they'll they know what you're talking about. Okay, well... I was in the Navy myself, and he, like, you know, points at his, <laughs> his mermaid. <laughs> Solid man. This is my first time ever being near a big old body of water that wasn't, that wasn't the Mississippi, so... <laughs> He's like, hmm. <laughs> yeah well i appreciate uh all your efforts here thank you if you need uh if you feel uh 
You know what? How about this? Uh, do you know that you know the lady lives up in the big spooky castle up on the road? And and <laughs> I'm going to say that your your attention for detail remembers one little thing. It's a secret castle <laughs> that's hidden in in the mountains. <laughs> and and you would know the old mansion. Uh, ah, like yeah, on yeah. The the, 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 He's gonna call house. it a castle. I think he'd call okay. it a castle anyway. Castle? Yeah, okay, yeah. okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, he's like, he's like, yeah. Yeah, you send yeah. an invoice up to her for like twenty dollars. Uh, oh, uh, okay. Yep. <laughs> you know, kind of like wiggling, kind of excitedly, but because um, like twenty bucks is like, <gasps> oh yeah, oh no, that's that's yeah. the big okay. that's the big bucks right now. No, right, it, right. It is. She will be very thankful that you gave us this information. So this is her way of paying it forward. Oh, that's great! And when his tentacles go like that, it like. You get like three little splotches of 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 goo. That just <laughs> great. <laughs> All right. good, good luck out there. Well, thank you. Um, it was very kind. Now, if you'll excuse me, uh, if I could get a cup of coffee, mm. I got somebody watching me out back that uh, I'd rather not know about my friend's uh, silver allergy. Oh, I got you. Turns around. He, you know, pours a cup. You hear it pouring. You hear a plop. You turn and he hands you a cup. Thanks. He, like, <laughs> looks in it. Little snails trying to get over the edge. I think he'll, like, <laughs> finger hook the snail out. <laughs> and, like, he'll, like, put the coffee up to his lips. Mm-hmm. And then he'll just like set it down on the counter. Right. Okay. But, like uh, he'll like the... do it like in clear uh -huh. view of uh -huh. the of the window so the cop can see, like if he's still there. <laughs> he's 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 pulled off. When when you when he saw you get out of the car, you saw the brake lights go off okay. and him take off down. Gotcha, the hill. gotcha, gotcha. So. Yeah. So I am uh it's time to go to the VA. All right. Okay, so you go, uh, you you go up the road, Lilith. Who are you? Uh, we we see basically we see the the car you stole going up the up the hill. Yeah. It's my car and Lilith, now. Who uh, who are you calling? You need to make some calls. Did you? Um, she has contacts in the city, mm -hmm. uh, similar to like the guy that uh, built in her met with to get information. Uh, mm -hmm. Because one of her things is uh, company resources and outsmart competition uh, from being a crime lord. Mm -hmm. uh, so she is calling her own company resources that are both natural and supernatural. Um, okay. That's to, awesome. Um, high alert, keep eyes and ears out. She's like, I want information. And I want it now about who the hell this is. All right, all right. This is this is an investigate role. Mm -hmm. um, go ahead and two uh, d six plus sounded like plus two. Yes. Okay. Uh, nine. Nine. I don't know how to do math at night. Oh <laughs> yeah. I don't know how to do it during the day, let alone at night. <laughs> Me too. Um. Ooh, a nine. So it's another uh, expose you to danger. Clues are fuzzy. Uh, uh, or who or whatever you're asking asks you a question back. Um, I, I like the ask the question, but because we're not really talking to the person, it could be that they also find out something about her. What okay. do you think? That sounds great. Um, that so so, whoever this is going to, the information you're getting from them, they also are aware that it's Lilith who is asking. Probably, yeah. So so yeah, so they'll it'll be one of those things where later on someone will be like nudge nudge, I'm the one who gave you the 
the clues, you know, kind of, mm-hmm. kind of try to use it as a favor from the crime boss. So mm-hmm. somewhere just note down, you know, uh, um, owe you one or something like that. Uh, okay. Oh. Okay. And, um, yeah, so that, um, and you let me know this is too metagamey, but I feel sure. like she would ask, knowing that Beltane was able to like, send off infer- like a message with mm-hmm. these or Faye or Pixies or whatever they were. Yep. Um, she's going to uh, ask him. <laughs> she might be a little rude at the moment because <laughs> she's mm-hmm. frustrated. She says, why don't you make yourself useful and see where the children are? Beltane will just sit in his seat sipping tea. Hmm. Maybe. <laughs> that wasn't a request. And this cup. Would you like to make a contract to see if the kids are all right? Would you like to make a contract to keep your life? I would like to see, try to take my life. You realize you're in my territory correct i'm older than the ancients my dear darling i don't care you can't kill me in a way that matters no but i can kill you in a way that hurts you stand up please beltane hawthorne make yourself useful and find out where the people that you brought to me are. I'm not going to state it again. He puts back down, takes his teacup. As you wish. Sips his tea and taps the table and three bees pop out. They'll find them. Good. Don't try that too often. And she'll turn around and just walk away. He just watches her and smiles. Might try to get in 10 minutes. <laughs> All right. Um, I think that before we go back to the, uh, the, you know, carjacking slash hospital runs, everything else. Um, I want to say that you're, you did send out like pixies or something before, right? This is what happens when you don't yeah, play for weeks. Yeah, it happened. Uh, I don't remember what for. Yeah. Unfortunately, I don't either. So they're going to come back with a clue anyway. Um, uh, let's say they're pixies. And they come back and they will let uh, Hawthorne know that all the, not all. The food's all rotten, says one of the pixies, it puts its hands on its hips as it's flying there. In what sense? Here, there, otherworldly, beyond the veil, tell me specifically where. Well, you know, we usually get some snacks out of the garbage cans, but all the garbage cans, all the food has gone bad. That's where food goes to... <clears throat> Try the kitchen. If it's bad there, I will inform the mistress of the house. And and they like <laughs> No, that's that food's fine. It's in town. You know, it, flying takes a lot out of you and they're like rubbing their little belly. And they're like, <laughs> and so we usually stop and, you know, there's usually like an apple core or a melon or 
something that somebody threw out. You know, sometimes, sometimes there's a whole crust of pie, and they get all like their eyes get like big. Stands up. I will talk to Lilith, and I think I know what's going on. Okay. Actually, actually more like mm -hmm. <laughs> British salute. <laughs> Waves them off. <laughs> and they just kind of turn to like swirly sparkles and just vanish. Um, yeah. And... Find Lilith. Okay. Good news, Let's... bad news. No, I haven't found the children. You are very slow. They don't travel in a straight line. But the pixies returned and um, food is rotting and at a fast pace. So kind of waves his hands, centipedal dust and all that jazz. Well, then it seems our new guest has something to do with this. Strange, though. I've never seen a vampire turn to a storm that is dead. Hmm. Would be one of the elder ancients before the new laws took into effect. Elder agent or not, I don't want it in my territory without it being invited. It's causing mush. It's causing problems, and I don't like it. I like to keep things organized, tidy. Well, extend an invitation then. That would be fantastic. Do you know who they are? You're the vampire. Ah, oh. yes, because we all know each other by the name and last name, first name as well. You have customs. Vampire society is not as organized as Fae society. He looks deeply offended for a moment for you. And then he goes, all right. The last 20 years of my unlife have been trying to organize it. I could suggest. Putting out a signal. I don't know. How does another undead attract another undead? Oh, yes. Let me just activate my pheromones or my smoke signals that we all know the meanings to. Surely there's a code of contact. You really don't remember much from the years that you were you, but not you. Those stories aren't sung or spoken, so I have no memory of them. Those millennial vampires from <laughs> the 1920s, <laughs> they don't have any rules, they're brouhaha. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Brujas are different. Um, oh, that's why I witches. said it that way, though. <laughs> They'd still be millennials if it was the turn of the century. I know, yeah. that's why it's amazing. I said it. Um, <laughs> listen, as you can tell, if a vampire does not want to be found, like you were trying to find me, they will not be found. This one, though, is different. Whatever it is, it's not feeding, at least not regularly. One would have to go without sustenance for days, weeks, maybe even more than a month to be that as hungry as they felt that thing. I think I need to go to the library. There are cars that you can take. Oh no, he just pushes a hand against the wall. I'm going this way and vanishes through the wall. There are wards in my house. You can't do that. <laughs> he pops his head back out. You invited me in. The wards do not apply. 
you're invited until I say you're not. Remember that little part of me inviting you in? Are you rejecting my invite or he points back to the wall? Go find the kids. It's too dangerous to be out there by themselves. The the girl has no idea what she is and Ezekiel is Ezekiel. I like them. Of course you do. I wouldn't expect any different from you, even in this version of you. <laughs> he laughs. I'll go find the kids. <laughs> Goes to the wall again. And as as you move through the wall, it swings back this direction, and there's uh, there's this uh, doctor who is uh, basically, you know, he's missing an arm, and he's. <laughs> Uh, you know, it's the VA hospital. And so this is the doctor who's on, on shift at night. And he's like, oh, bring her in, bring her in. Can, you know? can I make a small comment before we switch over? <laughs> sure, sure. So I'd like to think that as Bellatine is gone, we just hear Lilith say, mental note, this one's less cooperative and much less informed. <laughs> <laughs> not quite as malleable <laughs> I want to say when mm. Zeke said do you know a vet I mm-hmm. thought you were talking about like an animal doctor yes re- <laughs> yes well and that's what he meant too but no, that's but, what I've realized yeah <laughs> but the big squid guy's like oh yeah a vet <laughs> oh yeah no I know that guy <laughs> he's like up the road oh great um and and it's pretty much it's like like an old house that somebody has given to the VA oh, yeah. Yeah, thing, and so it's it's just war veterans, uh, you know, uh, you know, who are really aged at this point, because um, you know it's the forties now. And wait, yes, did we? Did we get through World War II? Yes. I cannot remember where yes. we're at. Okay, we are post World so, War II. So there are some like Marines from Iwo and and that kind of thing yeah, here yeah, too. Yeah. Okay, all right. Yeah, I had to get it in my head if World War II had happened or if you guys had stopped it because at one point you're time traveling. You had stopped the gnome from creating what needed to happen. Yes. But that okay. when we made the when we made this campaign, we had established this is post World War II. <laughs> all right. Whew. Okay, so VA hospital, this guy is like, like I said, one arm. He's like, bring him in, bring him in, bring him in. Let's, yeah, it, was, let's, uh, oh. it was a hunting accident that Dunn did it in. Um, ah. My friend has a silver allergy. I was told by a good fella down at the diner that uh, y'all might be able to help us out here. Yeah, them squibs, the Navy boys, they, yeah, they led you right. Okay, okay. and they, uh, you bring Dodd in and um and he of course is like he's like woo she's a looker i uh okay and then and then he like he like looks at you and then looks at her like no offense <laughs> none taken all right well um can you get that tray over there yeah he says as he's just got the one arm <laughs> hey you just tell me what to do and i'll do my best to do it uh, and he, he looks and he, he, he like lifts her gum up. Dot, are you, are you fading in and out of consciousness? Yeah. Okay. Well, somebody pulls your lip up and it's like looking at your teeth. Um, uh, I think she just instinctively like grabs his arm. <laughs> okay. like, well, I need that one. <laughs> <laughs> I've only got one of those left. Yeah, he's like, I need that one. <laughs> Uh, and she like looks at Zeke and she just goes, the doctor. That's me. And he that's... like waves the one hand that you have a hold of. Yeah, that's where we brought you. Uh, no. No, the it's who we're chasing. The it was the doctor. What? Yeah. Oh boy. Um all right, well, how about we just get you fixed up real quick and then you can tell me 
more about this doctor because there that's a hospital dot there's lots of doctors there i need you to give me a little bit more information <laughs> she like rolls over like you know kind of remembering what happened she's like do me a favor next time you shoot me can you make sure it kills me uh <laughs> no promises Oh. To be, okay, in my defense, this one was an accident. Mm. And the doc just goes, mm. <laughs> and he opens the the set of you know the the surgery tray. You know, pulls the the cloth aside from where it's been in the autoclave, mm. and uh, he's like, hmm, and he starts looking this this area, and he kind of pokes. <laughs> Because, because, because it's clean. It's you know, it's closed. Yeah, and and you there should be like a burn wound. Yeah, well, yeah, that's sure. what I'm saying is, is that he's like, mm, mm, pretty medieval technique. Um, Look, there wasn't looking, a whole <laughs> lot of options. <laughs> he's looking at you like, mm, um, I'm gonna have to. You're gonna have to help. And then he. Uh, he gives you uh, a set of uh, separating hemostats, and he's like, I'm going to make an incision, and after I cut, you stick those in about, and he goes to say like a quarter inch, and then he's like, a pinky thickness, mm -hmm. stick it in about a, th a pinky thickness, and open them up on me. And so he takes the, the, the scalpel, and he makes an incision. Well, she says, hold on a second. Oh. Um, and, like, she looks over at Zeke and she says, you got another one of those sil silver bullets? Nods. Just pops um, one out. Yeah, just, like, holds out a hand. Boop. Uh, closes a, a fist over it, and she's like, alright, I'm ready. And then he, he, like, stands up, or leans back, and he's like, you, like, wanna wait. Okay. No, the, uh, the one last uh, thing, and, like, leather bit into the mouth <laughs> it's gonna hurt <laughs> yep this is like so we are we okay <laughs> nice nice doggy don't bite the doctor and he, he leaves well, if she does i'll scalpel. just shoot her again <laughs> She, like, turns around and glares at him. She's got, like, the leather bit in her mouth. Like, she's, like, got a fist, like, all balled up, already ready to, like, to just start throwing them. Uh, like, the bags under her eyes. And there's probably even, like, veins that have started yeah, to spread from say, the wound. Yeah, I was going to say, you can see the silver poisoning in the, in the little, little, like, uh broken blood vessels or something and yeah and he's like he you can see he's like getting ready to like duck that fist <laughs> and, <laughs> and he, he makes the incision zeke you uh what you stick it in and yeah. you spread okay so what we're gonna do here is we are going to have dot make a roll because i don't think she's rolled yet tonight nope what kind of role are we gonna do? You are going to face danger when you oh, use no. your abilities to avoid an incoming hit, endure harm, or resist a malign influence. That makes sense. Yep. So hit me with some tags. What do you oh, got? Can I boy. assist with survival of the fittest? Yes, you may. So you're already at plus one. Well, I'm gonna say... Um... I'm gonna tag my silver locket, uh, even though I don't have it. I took the I took the um, the bullet, and this is to like keep under control and not wolf out. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to tag regeneration, um, and I have a <sighs> I have another tag that might work, mm -hmm. uh, which is called ancient blood. Um, and like that, that one I, I, I took as to be a little bit more nebulous because it's, it's more like she, she does have, um, questionable heritage. Like even, even before Biggie, it's like on her mom's side, like, uh... like something, something big, uh, from back then. Um, so if you're willing to accept that, that'd be three. Okay. Uh, what do you got in the weakness category that might go against that? Uh, probably sensory overload. Sounds good. So, totes plus two. 
Gotcha. Uh, let's see. That's seven on the dice, which gives me a nine. Nine. All right. A seven to nine. Take the status with one, minus one tier. On a miss, you take the full status. All right. Okay. So what you were trying to do is not, uh, not wolf out and punch slash bite anyone while they're pulling this bullet out. Uh, they do indeed manage to then, basically they, once you get the, the spreader hemostat in there, they get the probe and they get, start digging around to, to pull the silver, um, silver bullet out. And let's see, take the status. Okay, but I'm gonna. Um, so, was your silver poisoning at, at power level two? Yes. Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to minus the one tier. So you still have some silver uh, poisoning, which we can write into the story as an effect where it may show up. But it's only, it's only minus one now. And you hear the tink of the bullet. And then he looks at... He looks at... Uh, you know, your hand, basically the bullet, your leg, the silver bullet you were holding, hunting accident, and kind of puts it all together. It's like, ah, you want to be biggies, peeps, people? <laughs> Sorry about uh, the vernacular. Um, just like spits the leather strap across the room, doesn't give it back to Zeke. <laughs> um. <laughs> Wasn't mine. I grabbed it from the table. <laughs> Um, I think she knows who Zeke, or not Zeke, uh, I think she knows who Biggie is just mm -hmm. from, like, uh, just, just from being generally knowledgeable about the magic world in, like, in general. She's like, no. So your kind are pretty territorial and stuff so you might want to you know introduce yourself because i'd hate to hmm, well you guys are pretty resilient and he goes to fold his arms but realizes he doesn't have the other arm yeah. to, to fold so he just kind of like you know puts his hand like that kind of thing mm -hmm. huh i haven't seen a werewolf fight it, it's got to be pretty vicious, right? <laughs> yes. If you say so. She's gonna like, you kinda, like, like, sort of like look over her shoulder to try and get a look at what's back there, and then like you know give up on it. And she's like, "Am I good to go?" Uh, and he he looks and he's like, "Man, ah, that couple's just a few. Let me stitch it just in case, because." Hmm, you're not that it might have broken apart. There might be some little bits in there. I'd root around with a magnet, but the silver won't stick to it. And he he like he like licks the thread and then he holds the needle in his teeth and he threads the needle, you know, by holding it in his teeth, and then he wraps it around with one hand, like ties it. Now he just had the needle in his mouth. This mm -hmm. is the 40s though, so he doesn't think about it. <laughs> he starts sewing <laughs> you up. <laughs> and uh yeah, you you can feel that little, like I said, the little we from our perspective, we see the little like silver, like like you know, burst little burst blood vessel type stuff stippling you get. It kind of fades in and, and out. Um but yeah, and he, you know, <clears throat> bites it off, bites the, the, the string off, throws the needle in the pan. It's like, well, I'm glad I could be a help if, uh, yeah, if ever, you know, you need anything like this, uh, I'm Doc Stevens. And he puts out his left paw, your left hand. Well, yep. Zeke will shake it. Mm -hmm. yeah, if you, uh, I know that oftentimes you military folk end up uh, working pretty cheap on the government dollar, but uh, there's a lady up in the uh, spooky house up on the hill. If you just want to send her the bill for all this, I'm sure she'll take care of it. 
and uh, he's he's like uh, Miss Lilith. Yes, yes, I we've uh, I we I yeah I know I know of her. Yeah, we're uh, on her employ at the moment. So uh, consider this. Uh, we are, we are all square. You're you're great. Uh, the, you guys have have a great great night. And he's like one arms the tray. All the stuff's rattling, and he, he takes it over to the to the sink. <laughs> on our way out, uh, Dot's gonna grab some bandaging. Mm-hmm. Uh, she's gonna take that silver bullet that Zeke gave her, um, mm-hmm. and she's just gonna keep it in the palm of her hand, uh, and then wrap up the palm. Uh, with the bandage, so she's nice. always got skin to skin contact with some silver. Okay, excellent. And then we see you guys walk out, and that's where we'll go to break. All righty. So we are going to try and be back in five to ten minutes. So don't go no place unless it's to grab a food, grab a drink, grab a friend, or possibly get to indooradventure.redbubble.com. Pick yourself up something nice, and we'll see you guys shortly. All right, everybody. See you soon. And we're back. Hello, everybody. We have returned. Thankfully, a bullet has been removed. Beltane's going to the library, and Lilith is learning that maybe this version of Beltane is not like the other version of Beltane. Who would a little thought? bit more of a little shit. <laughs> that doesn't sound like Beltane at all, and that's the problem. GB, take us away. <laughs> all right. You guys are... Uh limping back to your stolen car when Beltane steps out of where what I think of massive vines just grow out of the ground and he steps out of them holding his teacup is this the place oh there you two are you see them and I think Zeke is like like hand on like like on his holster and then like recognizes it's Beltane just yeah, they both definitely react as though there's <laughs> danger approaching, just like, ah! So, um, I don't know how your evening's been. Ours was a bit of a doozy. It was pretty shit. Uh, Dot got shot again. I'm not going to say who uh, did that shooting, but uh, it happened, mm-hmm. and I'm sure that they are probably sorry. I don't know. Um spirits and such we met we talked to some folks ended up being zombies um after we got done talking to the zed heads they directed us to the hospital we went to the hospital there was like a ghost or something but it was like a spooky mean evil ghost and then dot you said that there was a doctor involved in all of this i mean i assume so because it's at the hospital and there's plenty of doctors there but like no there's no ghost human for sure but he's up to some shit yeah what well, that's it sounds horrible and i feel really bad for all of you involved especially the shooting that sounds painful really hard to take you seriously when you got that teacup <laughs> oh tosses it away there you hear it shatter yeah <laughs> Uh, also, if anybody asks, um, that car is not ours. Because it isn't. (laughs) Yeah, that's why I want to make sure that we're all on the same page. Oh. Well, that I discovered some undead. There's possible vampire hustling into her territory. We had a lovely night dancing and... We can go home. That sounds great. She and I got into a fight, and that's uh, fine. Are you guys like together or not? Like, I don't, I don't know what your dynamic is, but honestly, it's not my place to ask. But y'all need to figure that shit out. I'm trying to find that shit out myself. And would you like to come home with me? And Dot, would you like some cake? Honestly, that doesn't sound too bad. Okay. I got a question for you, Belle. Yes. Can you drive? I can, yes. Oh, thank God. 
Oh, you want me to take this? I want to say she tosses him the keys because she definitely took it from, took them from Zeke. <laughs> okay. He just kind of pauses and kind of calculates, and you want me to drive a stolen car? A uh, forcibly acquired car, yes. Stolen. I mean, if I recognize the person who we borrowed it from, I'll return it. <laughs> Get. He looks it over. I mean, he gets in. We could have just taken the fines, but of course, I'll drive a stolen car. You don't have to convince me. I just wanted to make sure we were all on the same page. Instead of taking the shortcut, we're going for a leisurely drive. Yeah. Why are you driving to? You don't know where you're going. <laughs> I'd like to just point that out. <laughs> Do none of them know how to get to the castle? They know how to get to the old house. They don't know how to get to the castle. Mm. Well, we'll just get to the old house first. Because remember uh, when she had them taken there, I said there was like blacked out window type car. Right, mm. right. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. So... He Stolen car. There. I don't know where we're going. <laughs> car idling. Well, um, spooky mansion, right? And then, like, find ourselves I some mean, food. Yeah. How about we get some food? Some actual food? Because there's nothing up that place, up spooky mansion way other than booze, and as much as I love beer for breakfast, that's not exactly something that we can all sustain ourselves on. Oh, hold on. He kind of leaves his head out the window and whistles for a pixie. Okay. Uh, can you find Lilith and tell her I need directions to the actual house? I'm, I'm driving a stolen car. Is that something I would do? I don't know. Borrowed. Borrowed. It's a borrowed car. Mm -hmm. Fully it's intend to give now. it back. Nope. <laughs> nope. Nope. Um, yeah, because the Pixies won't be able to... They're basically teleporting, so they won't know where they're teleporting. They just know who. So Lilith, this... Uh, oh, no, your house is warded. Lilith has allowed whatever's connected to Beltane... Because okay. he is invited, they can pop in and out. Okay, so then, yeah, this uh, this pixie pops in and, ma'am, message from Beltane. Uh, they don't know how to get to your house. Yes, that's the point, dear. Um, just tell them to teleport back. Righto. Oh, and here she'll give him a strawberry. <laughs> And he, he, like, you know, he goes, it's yeah. so heavy as he is for a second that he, like, with the strawberry, so he, like, splints his face with it. That was then, for you, dear. <laughs> and then he vanishes and he pops back out, and there's just, like, green strawberry uh, leaves sticking out of their mouth, and they. <laughs> spit that and i mean it covered their whole head so basically their head looked like this green you know strawberry uh leaves and and then uh teleport back vines leaves something she said okay uh Beltane kind of hands some fast food to dot and zeke mm. uh, this is uh from a magical place that dispenses ice cream No, this ain't bad. I'm sorry. I, I need you to make a roll <laughs> like this because it's just, I'm I'm putting it under because uh, I love to read it. When you perform a daring, risky, or outright stupid feat, um, yeah, just roll plus power. <laughs> um, plus power. So that's it. Uh... Whatever you can roll into magic to get magic ice cream. <laughs> sorry. There you go. Uh -huh. Ice cream. Um, I have just the thing. <laughs> and mm. So that pushes it to an eight. Okay. 
All right. Uh, is it really a magical place, or is it just Dairy Queen? It's just Dairy Queen. All right. So <laughs> somewhere you basically teleported <laughs> someone's Dairy Queen order into the car with you. <laughs> that kind of what you did. The people whose ice cream I stole. <laughs> All right. Okay. All right. Um, <laughs> uh you know mystical uh things um so and you said it was an eight mm -hmm. yeah so uh zeke what kind of ice cream do you not like uh i don't know if zeke would actually like ice cream or not kind okay. of thing like maybe he's just like it could be one of those like he just hasn't ever really had it before because he okay. grew up in the middle of fucking no place, so like mm -hmm, ice cream mm -hmm. might literally just be like a like he's heard about it, he's thought about it, and now like he's actually got it. It's just like all runny. Like, yeah, it's, it's like a, dill, a dilly dip or whatever it was. Yeah, it's like yeah. one of those round things with the outer chocolate. Yeah, he's got the dilly that. bar, but like the dilly yeah. bar has some like breaks in the bottom. He's got mm. he's got facial hair, so like as he's trying to eat it, it's just get like he's a fucking mess. He is like everything is sticky and he hates it. <laughs> and of I'm course, decided, there's, there's I don't like, like ice cream. <laughs> one thin little napkin in the in the thing <laughs> for you. And uh and and dot, what what kind of ice cream do you love? Um I'm looking at a Dairy Queen menu from the 1940s. Um <laughs> I'm going to say it's a strawberry shortcake. Which is to say, it's just like, it, it's it's called strawberry shortcake, but it's it's basically a bowl with like the classic like scoop and the little swirl. Um, mm. and there's like strawberries all over it and stuff. Yeah, this is it's perfect. It's like it's a absolute, little sundae. It's absolutely perfect. It's not melty or anything. The strawberries are like, you know, gorgeous. And uh, yeah, yours is yours is the uh, polar opposite of Zeke's. He gets a dilly bar that just falls <laughs> off the stick. Yep. My food is problematic and it cracks and it's melting and running everywhere. <laughs> um, and then yours is like pristine and perfect. Aww. Yep. As right. as they're kind of eating ice cream and these burgers and stuff that Beltane's just stole from a family trying to enjoy their day out. Right. <laughs> It's a late evening out, if anything. Like, we've been at this for a while. Right. Um, it's like a couple going on a date. Yeah. Their first time. And, it's and all like, he, oh, babe, I love hanging out with you. You know what would make this even better? Some delicious food from Dairy Queen. Dairy Queen. And he reaches into the back seat, and it's all gone. He's like, what? <laughs> but but little do you know you have saved him because he would have had the dilly bar and it would have been yeah, melty yeah. and he would have looked like a total ass all right <laughs> focus away from the sidetrack sidebar uh, that we love because you know it's dark shadows kind of thing <laughs> you're like why can't they just spend 10 minutes on this date i don't understand uh, because art not? wallace didn't know how to write those initial episodes <laughs> exactly. it's fine it's besides the point yep all As right. they're kind of eating ice cream and whatnot beltane's outside the car and he's setting up uh four cardinal points using mm. the four elements and he kind of steps back into the car sits down puts it hit the seat belt on kind of tugs at it and <laughs> like oh, why and breaks <laughs> it and just gives it up and says, okay <laughs> hold on to your butts as <laughs> He just slams his hands down onto the car and they vanish. This car has <laughs> seat belts? Hot shit. <laughs> Some futuristic tech in here. <laughs> yeah, and it's it's just a lap belt so yeah. that you're sheared in half and your face still gets smashed on everything. Um, okay. Um, uh, oh, God, so, just lands in the middle. <laughs> yeah. Uh, just... just <laughs> This uh, this stolen car appears in the middle of the courtyard of of Lilith's castle, um, and of course, you know, little underlings come to you. Oh, sorry, Lilith, and they are like, uh, you know, I, we're being invaded, ma'am. It's a car just teleported into the courtyard. 
<laughs> You're muted. <laughs> You're <laughs> muted. You're muted. This is perfect. Uh, sorry. Uh, she kind of gives a sigh and just goes, must I do everything myself? And just walks through the courtyard. Okay. And there is this car. It's just kind of a plain car. And Beltane steps out. Um, and then the other two get out and... Dot has this nice little bowl. It's empty, and there's a little little spoon and uh, type thing. And Zeke is standing there, like <laughs> like like bits of dilly bar and whatnot in his facial hair. If you excuse me, I'm gonna w- go wash up. Bathroom's at the end of the left hall. Thank you. <laughs> like little- just like <laughs> actively like touching door handles and things like that just like leaving <laughs> sticky behind no she's she like monster. snaps like a hand and there's someone already cleaning that <laughs> <laughs> um she'll kind of walk around the uh the car says and looks to beltane and says not your usual choice but all right i didn't pick this one yeah, and it is a it's just kind of a regular dumpy frumpy car. I can tell you like more exotic ones. Yeah. It's not black. What it it's kind of scratches at the paint. It's an ugly beige color. <laughs> oh, like I it. don't I don't know if you remember, but I do have your old car in the garage. My like, baby? <laughs> yes. Like, Puck the truck, or like the puck hearse. the truck made into the hearse. Okay, because right. remember right. we made puck the truck oh, into a hearse. Oh yeah, puck <laughs> puck was transformed. Okay, yeah, yep. And then she'll look at Don and says, "Miss Flannery, you look like you've had a night." Dot. Oh, okay. Hey, technical difficulties. And uh, yeah, so, well, it's, uh, that's Terribly hitting. Sorry, I got a call. What was that? Oh, sorry. Oh. Uh, uh, Lilith just looks to Dot and sees like blood and things and the bandaged hand and uh, bandaged <laughs> everything else. Everything. <laughs> and she just looks you over and says, You seem you, you've had an interesting night. She just sort of nods, um, you know, like you, you, the way that like a kid does, like after like a really bad soccer game, you know, <laughs> just and like she's still got like the bags under her eyes and there's like, you know, it, the, she's still showing the effects of like silver poisoning um, and she's like, yep. There's a fresh change of clothes in your room. Okay, thanks. And there's food in the kitchen. Okay. You can have it asked to be brought to you or room as well. I got it. It's fine. Don't worry about it. I must say it's hard to do when you look like that. It's okay. I'll just, I just need a shower. Maybe good night's sleep. Would you like some nighttime tea brought up to you <laughs> um I, I i think she like pauses for a moment and like realizes that lilith is being like really tender and like maternal here um and she just sort of like like acknowledges that and like doesn't know what to do with it she's like um yeah sure all right i'll be brought to your room go thanks sleep. You're welcome. She scoots out of there. Looks to Beltane. A whole car, really. You said teleport. <sighs> you I didn't must say be this once. way. Specifications. Specific. <sighs> he just grins. Let's see, manifest another teacup. So, yes, you're all sweet with her. I'm providing basic hospitality. 
Mm-hmm. You see, unlike you and Ezekiel, she's not been an issue for me. That's perfectly wonderful. Yes, mister. Would you like to make a contract? In retaliation to being rude to me, it was only fair. I'm going to make this clear. When you're in my house and I am pulling the strings on everything that's going on and trying to get information, just try to work with me. That's all up to Lilith and Maine on the car. I was never against you. No, but you're slowing down my process when a possible unknown elder vampire is in my territory. Apologies for the rudeness. Apologies for the contract. Hmm. Yes. Well, good night. Sweet dreams. Thank you. <laughs> She'll just walk back into the castle. I thought it's a castle. Yes, castle. And, uh, 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 one of your uh, assistants is comes out and uh, you know gives Beltane a little bow and it's like. Shall we uh, move this to a garage for you? Or um, will you be flying it out of here? Um, Does it have about, wings? About the car. You look at it. Put it in the garage. Let it cook overnight. Should be a Rolls Royce in the morning. As you wish. And you see this like ogre wander out and a little goblin runs up and like jumps on the sideboard, jumps through the window and it's like steering (laughs) and the ogre pushes the car away. All right. Uh, With that, where are we at? Okay, good. Um, You, Lilith, have a report uh, on your desk it's from and i cannot remember the guy's name i think it was like melkar or something like that he was uh one of the, the local met, yeah the sorcerer mm-hmm. um there's a uh a, a report there um you know basically saying that the um that there's obviously a new cult in town and they have been, um, yeah, and there's been uh, signs of ritual magic uh, here and there that they have, they have found in uh, multiple locations. Mm-hmm. Mm, does and, it say kind of like if it was like sacrifice related having to do with draining life force or... Um, they it does it it does say that it's believed that it's necrotic mm-hmm. and they even have a, a a sketch where there's a square and there's runes on the inside of the square mm-hmm. um but yeah the um you know they're like it's it, basically it gets across to you that it's 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 humans who are tapping into powers that they should Mm. not. Um, Okay. She will then have someone call on someone to get Beltane and Ezekiel there. She'll let Dot rest uh, because she was shot. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) (laughs) uh, And she'll be waiting for them in her office. It's a very okay. large, uh, fancy office with a nice dark black oak desk with the library walls. And they, there is a crystallized uh, lily of the valley flower on, the, uh, on her desk. Hmm. 
cool. Okay. Um, yeah, they they arrive, and um, like I said, there's even like an included a drawing or a rubbing mm-hmm. or something of of said square mm-hmm. with runes in it. Um, so yeah, once Ezekiel and Belting get there, she'll kind of like push forward the paper with the drawings and says, well, it's uh, a cult, so that's fun. Um, I'm not sure if they have to do with both your situation, Ezekiel, um, and my situation. If you could refresh me on what your situation was. Oh, I'm sorry, dear. It happened tonight. There is a possibly an elder vampire in my territory. That does seem like a problem. Yes. Usually. Uh, like most different species of supernatural creature, when you enter a, another territory, another's territory, you would announce yourself first. Get you. So, this guy didn't announce himself in your territory. Mm -hmm. I got another question for you. According to these rules, these laws, what have you, it's whenever any creature, it doesn't have to be like any specific kind, like only vampires have to announce themselves or the Zed heads downtown, should they all be coming up here greeting you like they're new neighbors? (laughs) No, uh, more, um, usually when it's of my same kind, it'll happen. Werewolves will introduce themselves to the peop- the other werewolves that control the area where their pack resides. Um, and vampires will introduce themselves to whatever vampire's territory they're going to if there's a vampire that has claimed that territory. If a smaller creature said just normal supernatural some trolls goblins that are free to come and go usually they will uh their presence will be known at some point i get you so what if there's somebody who's on my side of the fence and they're just kind of mucking around in this kind of thing because what dot was saying earlier is that while we were at the hospital one of those angry spirits big claws same kind of thing that well took my family from me Ah. what if those are being made by somebody who's uh not exactly playing by your rules well uh, there are strict laws on creating new creatures without the knowledge and the approval of certain people all right can't just create new beings or inflict a undead life or magical life on someone who did not agree to it that's where you're wrong kiddo from what we were able to talk from what we were able to discover talking to the talking to the zombies that were in downtown they don't know how they got there there was no agreement that was put into place somebody is turning people into those things now, from what well, Dot was I'm it, not wrong. They're wrong. They're breaking those laws. So well, you're this... supposed to be this high and mighty queen, this ruler of vampirdom. Shouldn't you be doing your due diligence and checking in on your subjects, making sure that shit ain't happening? Well, just that zombies don't fall under vampires. They fall under necromancy, which is a human issue, and the human councils have to deal with it. Clearly, human councils ain't doing shit. Clearly, Ezekiel did not know this was an issue. It had not gotten to me yet. But now that it is... I am aware of it. I I will be taking care of it to the best of my abilities because... At least this part, for a while, has been under my protection. I've helped it through a few demons white dragons and the sword but we have to find whoever's doing this and they have to uh, 
face those creatures that make these laws and face me. Now, do you have a name? Do you know who was behind us? A description of sorts? The only thing that I really know, they're a doctor. They're at the hospital. And as far as tracking them down, well, we got somebody with a great sniffer who's upstairs taking some Z's right now. She's the one who knows who it is, if any. Otherwise, uh, I feel a little weird going back to the hospital. I may have told a number of people that I was a U.S. Marshal. I hmm. may have threatened a few orderlies. I may have fired my gun, guns several times while within the walls of that hospital. Um, I may have taken a bleeding body away from that hospital. I may have acquired a car in the parking lot of that hospital that was then teleported to your house. Um, I blew a pot sign. It's one of those red octagon ones. A stop sign? Is that what that word is? The yes. No, the letters get all jumbled up. Well, I've learned many things today. A, you're not allowed into the hospital anymore. B, well, you're probably <laughs> dyslexic. And C, Belting, you have to return that car. Well, dyslexic, I've never even looked at another man before. How dare you? You are quite entertaining. <laughs> he does not perceive men. <laughs> <laughs> men, what are those? Um, Belting just looks delighted at all of this. <laughs> uh... I mean, I could t like tilt my hat low and bring my bandana up over my, my over my mouth. Yeah, no, that you have a very distinct look, like a look. It's a disguise. <laughs> She'll press a button. I inter were intercoms a thing in the forties? Well, yeah, yes, in our reality, I'm just yeah. Okay, say, it's like yeah. very old it's timey, like the old timey. Yeah, intercom. yeah it's, it's like, like eh. this big. Yeah, yeah, it's this big, and it's a yeah. Uh, she'll press the intercom and say, um, Johnson's one of the butlers, why not? Mm, sure. uh, please uh, bring Miss uh, Flannery to my office. Mm. Also, right. the con save. Thank you so much for the follow. Hey. Hey. GB, would you like to show what happens when somebody follows while you're on the show? Almost grabbed the didgeridoo. Uh. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, thanks for the raid. Oh, thanks uh, for the raid as well. Raid. Oh, well, con save when somebody gives us a follow and I'm on the show. I take this mal mole and I hit this guy in the face. Good bongs. Good bongs. Good bong. Just for you. Bong, bong, bong. All right. So, uh, you know, there's a uh, Miss Flannery. Miss, uh, Miss Flannery. Yeah. Uh, Miss Lilith would uh, appreciate your presence in her office. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, I want to say she all but like falls out of the bed. Mm. Um, and she like gets up, uh, kind of stares at herself in the mirror for a second, uh, and pulls on her shirt. Um, like thinks about like maybe fixing her hair a little bit. Uh, like I, I imagine like it's it's all like tuzzled now. Um, she just kind of like looks at herself and then she's just gonna pull the bandana out and like let it go free. Uh, and she'll head out the door. All right, and he's like this way, and he leads you there. Um, yeah, he's this. You know, you're you're looking at them and you're like vampire. <laughs> <laughs> you just tell they're vampire. Um, and they're trying to be uh, pleasant and, you know, uh, treat, treat you nice because you're a guest of Miss Lilith. And they get you there. Um, Dot enters the room. The office uh, with the black, de the black desk and mm -hmm. whatnot. There's comfortable chairs for them to sit. Okay. Uh, Miss Flattery, uh, excuse the interruption, but I've been told you may have some information about a person who's creating undead people. Uh, yep. Yeah. Uh, she'll walk in, sit in the chair, and, like, pull her legs up underneath her. Um, there's this doctor at the hospital. I don't know, he just didn't smell right. He seemed to have something to do with that shadow we were following around. 
and uh, I, I don't remember a lot when I change, but I'm pretty sure I saw him. I think we might have been chasing him. Potato, oh. thank you for the follow. Potato. Shall we just like gong Do away? It again. Yeah, just gong away. <sighs> for you, who is it? Potato? Potato. 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 Thank you, Potato. Thank you, Potato. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, so the. Uh, yeah, and uh, you get these flashes of the f- the doctor's face, and we, as the audience, know that this is the guy who brought changed the guy into said uh, zombie. Um, but like we see a flashback of her, it, like like chasing at, chasing him down some stairs. Uh, like there's a flash forward, and like yeah. uh, swipe. She, like, you yeah, get he, his like, coat. Sw- yeah, like he fucking like t- yoinks her uh her locket, um mm. and like more flashes of the ensuing fight right up to the point where she gets shot <laughs> by Zeke. <laughs> somebody uh, we can't somebody. tell. <laughs> somebody with a somebody silver <laughs> bullet with a like, really cool know. hat. Uh, yeah, yeah, obviously, you know. Um, Lilith would ask Dot if may I take a peek into your mind. It, do you think that's going to help? I would be able to see the person. Yeah, sure. Just don't go looking anywhere you're not supposed to. I'll mm. only be reading whatever you're thinking. <laughs> don't think about that thing. <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> she like stares directly ahead for a second. Like You oh, can God. give me a description if you wish. <laughs> Um, and she'll something. she'll conjure um, she'll conjure a an image of the doctor. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, because she does have mind reading. I will say she does it, uh, but she's only just focusing on like the image that Dot is um, looking at uh, or conjuring, and then kind of writing down the description um, and say interesting. Oh, thank you, Miss Flannery. Um, if you have a scent of them, that is also good. I may have you work with some acquaintances of mine, if that's all right. To track this person down. Obviously not tonight. You need your rest. Who, who are you talking about? Um, I have a deal with a... Uh, the werewolves who share this territory with me. She, like, looks a little uncomfortable. Um, I've only heard rumors, but I've heard the werewolves around here are working with the the mob. (laughs) Dear, I am the mob. Oh. <laughs> okay. Sure. I'm a lot of things, dear. See that? Yep. Mm. I, I I'm pretty sure I could find him again. All right. Then if everyone agrees, tomorrow we go out to try and track down this doctor get some information out of them what do you think i think so to expand on the question that's bugger me did the doctor smell undead no all right we don't have to bring in this charlotte i'm afraid i don't think this doctor is going to be the same person or thing that I sense tonight. Uh, Miss Fire, there is a, possibly an elder vampire in the toy, so do be safe when you're out on your own. But if we all we are all trying to get to the bottom of this, we all share the same goal, then working together tomorrow will be probably the best. I have resources. You all have information. Beltane is Beltane. 
that since you were like hurriedly uh brought down here did did you leave your book in the room yes like your tools in your book yep all right Ah, I can't get it to change. Stupid thing. Oh, battery must be dead. All right. Well, I'm going to change the lights. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we see Dot's book laying in her uh, in her room, and and it blows open, and it the pages are all flipping and flying back and forth, and it stops on a page. And, and we have a, a pentagram, you know, star up, you know, mm -hmm. Guild of the Good Witch type magic um, from her book. And, and it goes, when it glows red, and then the pentagram turns in the book and turns to point down goat's no. head goat head and we see this red glow uh kind of like pulsing from it and i think that we uh get a view of somewhere else somewhere other and uh because this is a new series uh, Wings, if you would so describe our, our dear friend Harker, um, I'd appreciate uh, it. Has much changed, do you think? Uh, it, you, it is your Harker, character. Harker, but more so. evil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So she has also, a black goatee now. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. like the curly, like, pencil uh -huh, mustache. Uh -huh, yeah. <laughs> That's um, not bad. Um, I, I, I'll say uh, we get the back image first. Um, there's a trench coat. Um, and uh, if we want to like make a change. Well, she had a hat before, didn't she? Whatever. Who cares? Um, yeah, she used to have the fedora thing going on. The uh, trench coat and fedora. Um, mm -hmm. She's got tight curls uh about the head um like the uh the, the 1920s like helmet style uh kind of haircut um and she is probably like leaning over um a, a table of some sort uh and there's a a red glow that is uh emitting from it um and like <laughs> i don't think we get to see her face necessarily it cuts to the front um mm -hmm. and she's She's wearing um, a like nice slacks, uh, and she would have a tie on, but like I think it's like undone a little bit. Uh, and there's a a glass of whiskey on the rocks on the table next to her, um, and she's just like looking at this uh, pentagram on the table, um, and she's got this immaculate red lipstick, uh, and we only see her from, like, the face down, mm -hmm. uh, like, the half the face downward, um, and those immaculate red lips curl into a wicked smile. And and then we see the, the whiskey glass. <laughs> we, we see the whiskey boil, and they, the ice cubes just kind of shrink to nothing as the actual whiskey itself boils. And then we get that that grin. And then the book, the book goes <laughs> and slams shut. Um, yeah, and the book slams shut. We, as the audience, you have to take that in as, what the fuck? Um, and so, unbeknownst to anyone, but that is my foreshadowing moment. Um, okay, so back to the the awkwardness of the uh, the having to work with the local mob slash such because your mama told you not to work with the mob, right? <laughs> and yeah. here you are. <laughs> and here I am. <laughs> so like. It's like, well, Dot Flannery, you wanted to get out into the world, and here you are. <laughs> okay, so going on your current leads, uh, what's the next? Do we do we jump to the next day, the next evening? Is there more 
plot planning red string to, to pins in the board uh, to do? Uh, Lilith, I was going to say Sadie for some reason. That's my cat. Uh, <laughs> Evil. Hmm. Um. Hmm. Uh, no, she's a little sick right now. She's so sick. Uh, baby's got the cat flu. Um, but um, she tells them that they can leave if they wish. Uh, she's got some planning to do for mo- for more for tomorrow. There we go. Um, uh, but whoever wishes to help can stay. But she's herself putting together these thoughts. Like she's like, these are the issues that we have. We have zombies, like the cr- and their creator. We have a shadow person. We have an elder vampire, possibly, and we have a cult. And she's just trying to figure out how all these things connect. Uh-huh. I figure, like, Zeke has probably helped himself to your storeroom of booze yet again. There's one of those little carts, yeah. of, mm-hmm. like, with the setup of, like, whiskey with the, in the glass container. Ooh, a uh, decanter? A, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. A, a, mm. a carafe cart with a decanter of whiskey. Oh, one second, um, I can't. I, I want to say that, at, like, at some point in the evening, um, like, Zeke Ooh, went to go and, like, raid the, oh, uh, the alcohol stores. Um, yeah. and he like crossed paths with Dot, uh, as she was raiding the fridge, um, <laughs> as she, grabbing a midnight snack because she now has a werewolf sized, uh, appetite. Uh, mm. and, um, oh, wh- what's it called when your, when your system works too fast, uh, and burns all, all a the high energy. metabolism. That's yeah. the one. She's got a werewolf sized metabolism now. Oh, me metabolism. <laughs> <laughs> so, so is it like this thing burns a lot of calories, my dude? Oh yeah. Is is it like, like you know, pull a a, a, a hunk of ham out and just like start gnawing into it, or is it more like I've got to make six sandwiches all for myself? You um, know, and she, she's making like a Scooby Doo sandwich. Okay, all right. <laughs> yeah. This is yeah. classic Dagwood. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. So. I think, cross. Yeah, Zeke would probably uh like as you're as you're like getting all the sandwich fixings just um I would like to say uh I'm glad we fixed you. We owe that doctor a lot. Just kinda like raises an eyebrow at him. Um, and she says, that must have been hard for you. Uh, taking care of friends that, uh, got injured around strange folk. Uh, that's not exactly something I'm well, adverse to. Not necessarily the part I'm talking about. Uh, you're like a monster hunter type guy, yeah? Fun in my fair share. But you're not a monster. She kind of like like itches at her back a little bit. She's like, could have fooled me. All right. Look. Whatever it is that happens when you wolf out, there is no bad blood between myself and Beast. All right? Just laying that out on the table. They don't like me too much. Because I may have shot you a few times. <laughs> but it was always in good faith. I understand getting shot is not exactly the most optimal scenario. But in a situation where you don't exactly have the faculties for me to say like, Hey, cut that shit out. Turn back to the way that you were. Putting silver in you seemed... It could be considered a uh, a decent alternative. Uh, she like takes a big bite out of her sandwich while he's talking. Uh, goes and sits on the counter. I mean, I get it totally. That makes a lot of sense. I'm just saying. I don't have a lot of say in what that other side does. So, maybe it wouldn't be a bad idea to try and make nice? 
I'll try my best, but uh, listen. When it comes to someone like you, I'm not going to shoot to kill. Clearly. Whether or not me and Beast end up making nice, that's besides the point. I don't exactly plan on sticking around here for very long unless somebody tells me otherwise. And once my job is done, I'm going back out. Heading back home. But in the meantime... I don't exactly have very many friends out here. I'd like to consider you one of them. Even though we haven't known each other that long, you've been nice to me. Um, she like munches thoughtfully. Um, finishes the sandwich, kind of brushes the crumbs off. Uh, and starts making her way out of the room. All right. But if we're going to be friends, you might want to start treating the other side like a friend, too. I'll do my best. And I think, like, <laughs> like Dot leaves, Zeke goes to check the fridge for something for him to eat, and it's just cleared out. Like, there's just <laughs> nothing left. <laughs> <laughs> there's a there's like a, a little magnet pad there that you know is like what do we need and it's just like now there was like milk on it and <laughs> oh i imagine by morning by morning it'll be like everything well, i um, imagine it's like he opens up the he opens up the refrigerator or like the ice bot like the ice chest or whatever and it's mm -hmm. like just like the jar of olives situation <laughs> like it's like all barren except for like the one food that dot's like mm, yucky like don't want to eat that like right particularly since it's probably just uh you know very just uh, you know goblins ogres yeah. trolls that, that maybe some of the orcs or whatever that actually eat in the house and then the rest is all just like blood um yeah. like that's... and dot dot would you have dug into the blood supply Sorry. Uh, I think she would have like cracked it open, like gave it a sniff, and just be like, mm, mm, mm. Well, like, <laughs> that's then, not like, strawberry you know, jam. And, and then like considered it for a second, and then was like, uh uh, no, 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 no. Like, <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Put no, that no. back in there. All right. Um, I guess we'll do a, um, because we're we still got like twenty some minutes, and I I don't know. I think do do we want to go to some other foreshadowing, or do we want to get on to the next day and have the the dot biggie interaction? I had one thing that I wanted to to do with Lilith. Oh, sure, it sure. It was while she was like, oh, vampire lord, cults, uh, other people, like, what is the connector? I think that Zeke mm -hmm. would, like, again, like, decanter with whiskey. He's probably coming back, like, a little dejected and kind of grumbly in his tumbly uh, from the kitchen. Or, like, he's just, like, a jar of olives just fucking, like, <laughs> popping them. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, he says, um, you know, I'm as unconnected as these things rightly seem, I think that they might end up being a little bit more closer, closer, uh, strong. I agree. And I think by now, Lilith kind of like went to her room. She's in like a night robe. Her hair is like kind of like tied back. She has a glass of whiskey, but it's a little dark. <laughs> she probably mixed mm. blood into it. Uh, there's a little fireplace that's been, uh, lit up in her office. Uh, she has the papers out. Um, I think you're right. Uh, what was Zeke's last name, sorry? Sullivan. Sullivan. I think you're right, Mr. Sullivan. It's no coincidence that these things are all happening at the same time. Well, I have uh, a question for you. Yes. Does so so uh, say there's an elder vampire, right? 
like one of you, one of your kind, do they have the ability to bestow any kind of powers on anybody else? Or like if like if your kind like keeps books that can then be readable and transferable by others, or it, can it be like uh like you brush up against somebody or you give them a little nibble and then suddenly they got magic powers because when we were talking to the zombies they seem like they were saying that uh the doctor that they went and saw um he seemed awful excited about being able to fix them about being able to help but everybody else around didn't seem like they were too aware of the situation is it possible if if he doesn't know necessarily what he's doing, if it was something that maybe one of your kind helped him accomplish. It's possible. All vampires don't have the same power. It varies between them. Um, I feel like this doctor might be more connected to the human cult. If you see, and she'll pull out the the uh, drawings of the um, sigils and all that stuff. I know this may not mean anything to you at the moment, but this, it's more related to necrotic magic. And if this cult is messing with that, I would assume this doctor might be part of that cult. Possibly. Did you know that raccoons can hunt dogs? Just as an aside, now usually in the scenario like that, they work together. If a dog is chasing a raccoon, raccoon one will go into the water, swim out, dog goes over, puts its nose up to where the water was to try and detect to see where that raccoon went. Second raccoon comes out, pops itself on the back of the dog, puts the dog in the water. If they say this necromancer man that's what you're calling him this this wizard this ne'er do well doctor say mm -hmm. he's raccoon one he's causing a lot of problems he's getting the he's he's causing a lot of problems he's being loud in ways that he doesn't understand it means that he's going to be trying to get somebody's attention and clearly he got ours now if that's the case and he's going to be out swimming in the pond. We should still take care of him. But I'm more worried about raccoon number two. I'm worried about the one that's going to try and keep our head under the water. I understand your analogy and your worries. I agree. It's possible that this thing that I sense might be also connected to the cult. Might be our raccoon too. Um, if this is some sort of elder vampire or, or something related to the undead, I can't for sure tell you it's one of my kind, but it might be something that was summoned by this cult, some sort of entity, deity. I've had my fair share of interactions with deities. Um... I think right now we need to be aware of all the players on the board and what hidden players there might be. There's got to be a reason for creating zombies, be it an army that will be activated at some point, servants, sacrifices, something. Army, I think, might be a good use for it the, not, not to be sound, the first time i've seen it not to sound i know how this is going to come off what i'm trying to say is in a situation like this i've hunted quite a few creatures in my years i got silver bullets for creatures like dot I have iron bullets for individuals such as your friend and old friend Beltane, as well as, you know, regular folk. I hate to ask this because of the way that it sounds. What kind of what bullets would work on you? 
Now, you hired me. I made good on my word. I will not turn any of my revolvers on to you. As soon as I'm done with my job, I plan on leaving, going back where I came from, calling it good. It may not sound like I have, but I do trust your word, Mr. Sullivan. Well, that's something. I, well, to be fair, as it stands right now, like I said, there's not exactly a whole lot I could do. Well, um... It doesn't Let, bother me as much, but go ahead. What are you saying? Oh, so yeah, I, some of the things that you've heard of over the years is shotgun shells made of mm -hmm. rosary beads, mm -hmm. uh, bullets that have been, you know, rubbed in garlic. Um, but again, all that kind of bullets are mm -hmm. really not yeah. a, not usually a problem for your kind. Yeah. Um, but if you she'll, have any additions to those, go for it. Uh, she'll say those things like uh, you could make uh, bullets maybe out of rosary cases or have a priest bless your bullets, should you wish. Uh, holy water seems to work very well. God doesn't really like us. Um, so you could dip your gun or even your bullets in holy water. Uh, maybe etch some sort of, uh, I know the Catholics and Christians try not to delve too deep into the supernatural, but that is what they are either way. So some sort of Christian or C Catholic sigil onto them, some symbol that represents whatever they, they want. I feel like those kinds of things only work if you believe in it, Miss Lilith. I'm not a man of faith. I can see that, but uh, water blessed by a priest is still water blessed by a priest no matter who handles it. You know, got any priests on retainer? You'd be surprised. Well, if we're going up against some kind of elder vampire, maybe we, maybe I can take some time. If y'all are going to the hospital tomorrow and, uh, well, seeing as how I made myself quite a storm there. Oh, future note, uh, going into the hospital, they kind of <coughs> just let you wander around wherever as long as you got a cigar and keep telling people it's a girl or it's a boy. They just like, let you into whatever rooms. If you act like you belong somewhere, people won't question it. I'll keep that in mind. Um, I will say, uh, try garlic oil as well. Dipping a blade in it, a bullet in it, possibly. Speaking of garlic, one second. <laughs> She'll press her to come. Johnson, can you please bring food up for Mr. Sullivan? Oh, there's... Not the regular um... kitchen, the, the other kitchen we keep separate from um, the guest. <laughs> Yeah. I, of course, ma'am, I'll, I'll bring something right up. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. Yeah, and that it, was, uh, she wolfed it down pretty much your whole it, kitchen. It, it it ends up being like, <laughs> like tomato soup or something that was like in the cupboard that Dot would have had to make. That <laughs> tomato eat. soup or like grilled cheese so, would be right, like, I'm that's just, real good. I'm just saying, but, but this is what ends up coming up is mm -hmm. like, like a bowl of soup and some oyster crackers that were in the cupboard that Dot didn't bother with, you know, she went right to the fridge. Um, so yeah, uh, but you get some, you get some food. Um, is, is there more to this scene or is it like no. tomato soup? Like, like, is this blood or is this tomato soup <laughs> for you? Good, sir. Yeah, um, I mean, <laughs> Zeke would probably like at least like try a spoonful yeah. either way, see it's how far it gets. Yeah. Uh, but she will, Need she'll just salt. have the food. Mm. She'll have the food brought up, uh, point to a cart of uh, decanters if he mm. wants to drink. Um, I do appreciate your help, Mr. Sullivan. Look, I know I might be a little bit of an abrasive individual. 
But we got things that need done in this town. And I see and I aim to see them through. I respect that. Many people might sound abrasive as well in different ways. If we got off on the wrong food, I do apologize. Ah, uh, you're fine. That Beltane fellow's weird though. Always talking about contracts and old shit. <laughs> He's an archfade, dear. Yeah. I don't it's really know what life. that means. Is that like a bridge? Like he builds bridges or something? <laughs> uh, do you know the world of fairies and uh, fae that control the seasons? No, can't say that I do. Most of the seasons that I know are either brought by like a giant eagle, or like a bison. <laughs> Should you ever want to read up on more creatures, I have books that can help you. Ah, more of a spoken history kind of fella. Well, I could tell you some stories. And he will sit back, top yeah. like top off a decanter, like doesn't yeah. even bother, and just like, well, it looks like I'm in for a treat. She'll sit back herself and just like, well, the first thing you should know, and then. Perfect. Great. Okay, so uh, Beltane. We uh we get this like uh fancy shoes moving along the carpet and then up to the finely tailored pants and you know we get this this back uh behind Beltane's head walking along um to where do you where do you go or how do you where do you come across dot <laughs> He's holding a mug as he goes to look for Dot and kind of has a plate of uh, apple pie in the other hand. Once he finds her, sets it down in front of her, pushing it towards her. Dot, were you in your room or? Uh, I want to say she's like, she started wandering around the house uh, at mm. one point and probably settled down in a, in a reading room somewhere she's got her book out and she's flipping through it like you know trying to make sense of the all the things that are going on right now um and so she's like looking at the book uh and then like some apple pie just like materializes in front of her comes in from out of frame there's yeah. apple pie <laughs> she looks over at it and then glances up at bell hello it's Granny Smith. <laughs> she looks looks down her nose at it, and like there, there's like a very clearly she's like getting a sniff of it from from where she's at, um, and she says, "And what is this offering for? Because usually for this you. goes the other way, right?" Nobody's offered me sweet things in over a thousand years, so. Oh, that's depressing. Nobody worships the Fae anymore. Must be such a tragedy not to be worshipped. She, like, it's pushes amazing. the book to the side and kind of pulls the uh, pie in. She starts uh, picking at it. How are you feeling? Like like pulling the lattice work off and just eating the crust, the the lattice work kind of picking at it, <laughs> or well, sure. I mean, like if she was provided with a fork, she she'd be using mm -hmm. it. Okay. Is it is it an yeah. entire pie? No, it's just a slice. Okay. Oh, okay, okay. All right. <laughs> so I was like, mm, I need the visual. Sorry. Go ahead. Mm -mm. I forget what the question was. <laughs> I got distracted by pie. <laughs> How are you feeling? Um, as good or bad as can be expected, I guess. I got shot yesterday. I don't know. How would you feel? Like the world was on fire. That's not unlike it. You don't have to be in this world if you don't want to. What do you mean by that exactly? 
you don't have to follow us into the darkness that's approaching. You know, growing up, uh, my mom didn't really give me a choice on that matter. She always told me about it, so I knew what to look out for. But for the most part, I had to stay away from it. And I mean, look at where that's gotten me. No, I think, I think I'm a part of this world, whether I want it or she wants it or not. And if nothing else, I want to be here because I choose to be. All right. Uh, where did you find Dot? Or Dot, where did she find you? Or uh, he, they find you? Uh, in the reading room? In a reading room. Okay. Did you have your book with you? Yeah, she was. She's flipping through it, trying to find something to help make sense of uh, the zombie stuff. Mm. Uh, Bell, roll plus two. Give me just a, a roll plus two. Ten. Uh, ten. Uh, her book's magic. He just watches it and kind of taps it gently. Was your mother a magic practitioner? No, 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 no. Are you? Um, I think I'd know if I were. Then again, you know what? In light of recent occurrences, <laughs> maybe. Yeah. Well, Miss Dot Flannery, welcome to the world of magic. As he sets its, the mug down and turns it, there's a Christmas tree on it. No! <laughs> I will ask you something. I don't know if Zeke or Miss Lilith would be so kind to it. When you go into the world, share your stories. Their memories. The world remembers. I can't remember certain things because the stories aren't being spoken. But the world needs to remember this. I think I get what you're saying um and she like shows her book to him um and it's li it literally just looks like a really really old like picture book for children i mean it kind of smile about it appearances can be deceiving but there's a lot of truth in here We wanted to warn people about our kind. It was the kindest thing we could offer. The stories are true, if a little bit warped. But as they evolve, we evolve. So everything in that little book of yours is very, very true. Hmm. Would you mind comparing notes? He takes the book and flips a few pages. Chapter one. Um, ah! So uh, we have these two great scenes of of you know the other characters kind of comparing notes and trading and all this and we will end with uh we end with so there's um we see this uh fancy like a rolls royce 
it's black with silver trim, uh, chrome trim, sorry, not silver, chrome trim, uh, pull up to the VA hospital and a truck, uh, like an old army truck rumbles up behind it. And uh, the door opens and a, a good looking man in a, in a zoot suit, the big hat, and he's swinging a, a, a stainless steel watch around and he puts it in his pocket and he's like, all right, boys, let's deliver some whiskey to our, our good, uh, our good Samaritan type peoples around here. You know, these, these soldiers, they, they fought to keep America free so that I can keep making money. And as they start uh, start carrying, you know, some some hooch into into the VA hospital, he he gets a weird look. And he wrinkles his nose, and he and then we see we kind of close in as he's he's sniffing and not as such. We close in, and we see that his eyes suddenly like look like wolf eyes and they kind of glance to the side, but he's got the zoot suit hat thing going on. So the wolf eyes look to the side and then credits roll. Hell yeah. I'm excited for next week. GB, thank you so much for running this game. I had an absolute blast playing more monster noir, but it's always a blast whenever you're on the show. GB, where can we find you? What do you do? Uh, you can look me up on Twitter, Graybeard Tavern. Uh, you can find me on Twitch at Graybeard Tavern. And uh, you can find me here on Thursdays. You can find me on my channel, 10 a.m. Sunday mornings. Uh, we are fighting a big boss battle Sunday morning again because we had a computer glitch game crash situation for Wilder Myth. So we have to fight the boss fight again. So it's a uh, World of Tomorrow Groundhog Day situation. Hopefully it'll go better than the first time because it was almost a TPK. Only one character standing. Uh, and that's Sunday, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on the uh, uh, on Greybeard Tavern. And then Tuesdays, you can find me over on the Old Timer Tavern on Lantern Noir's channel, where the two of us and, you know, 70 or 80 years of gaming experience yammer on about different gaming topics from everything from, you know, homebrew to being woke to you know you name it we we try to we try to bang some sense into some grognards out there but you can join us ask us questions anything you want it's pretty open to uh it's like sitting at a bar with uh, some old gamers that's what we do that's me gb hi everyone my name is satan uh and other than Thursday nights playing Lilith. You can find me here Sunday nights playing Kuori, uh, our Goliath Eldritch Knight um, in Rama the Frost Maiden that uh, wings here, DanaeKeener.com herself uh, runs, um, as well as you can find me Saturdays over at Plot Hunters. We've just started our season five. Um, and we're going through the yawning portal. Uh, I'm bullshitting my way through some uh, Duragard and about to fight Odiva or Planetar. Something angelic. I don't know. Uh, I insulted it because it was funny. Um, <laughs> Sunday mornings, you can also find me over at the Hive Goblin at 10 a.m. EST, uh, where I run uh, a few of my friends through my homebrew world uh, in a campaign called Nexus Adventure. So if you want to see me in the DMC, you can find me there. Uh, and if you just want to keep up to date with my life and how much I have insomnia and sometimes my own art, uh, you can follow me at Elsa Vamp with two Ps over on Twitter. That's me. Hey everybody, I'm Wings, also known as Danae Keener. You can find me at DanaeKeener.com. I do nerdy drawings, mostly related to D&D, &D, and a lot of things on this channel. Uh, as Satan said, you can find me here on Sunday running Rhyme of the Frost Maiden. Things are getting really exciting. Uh, we're on the Isle of Solstice. Oral is right around the corner. The Frost Maiden herself. Everybody should be scared. Everybody should be excited. As am I. I'm both those things. DanaeKeener.com. 
Hi, I'm Jen. Uh, you can find me here on Thursdays playing Beltane Hawthorne and over at the Hype Goblins channel uh, playing Anthony Silverhorn, a artificer barbarian, hoping that uh, everything's going to be all right because it's got to be all right. It's fine. And uh, occasionally you can find me uh, just hanging out, uh, doing various gaming channels with over at the uh, Hype Club and channels, going through Valorant or Wilder Myth, which is really fun, and uh, just having a good old time. And if you've made it this far, you probably already know who I am, but if you don't, hey Acorns, what's up? It's me, your buddy, your pal, your friend, the indoor adventurer, the showrunner here at twitch.tv slash indoor adventures. We do shows like this on Monday and Thursday at 5.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, as well as on Sundays at 7 o'clock p.m. Pacific Standard Time. If this is your first time joining us, you can go to youtube.com slash indoor adventures to check up on all of the VODs of each of the games that we have played up until this point. And we are also available anywhere audio casts are made available for free under the same moniker. And and speaking of things that are being made available for free, if you go to patreon.com slash indoor adventures, you can check up on our after show called Nights in the Courtyard, where we answer questions not only from the community, but also from each other. So if you have any questions that you'd like to ask myself or any of these other fine folk, feel free to join us on our Discord. You can find the link in the description uh, of this video down below or... Hey, guess what? We post the Twitch. Uh, we posted the Discord link in the Twitch chat as well. So if you're watching this live at the times that we specified before, check for it there. Uh, but for now, we are going to be going into our Patreon-supported after show. So I'd like to say thank you to everybody who decided to stop by and join us for this wonderful game of City of Mist. Thank you to GB for running this game. I had an absolute blast, and thank you to these players for putting up with our bullshit once again this week. And we'll see all of you guys next time. All right, everybody. Bye bye.